went went traveling. traveling. <laughs> they went traveling and came back to me. But anyway, so I've had some of those experiences. So even though I don't quite understand them, I've had them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the main idea behind the book Quantum Jumps is just to help people feel com comfortable with these experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah. To understand that there is science behind it. It's a natural process. Mm -hmm. It's not something you know, scary, it doesn't need to be scary, yeah. it doesn't need to be out of our control. Mm -hmm. It's it's just recognizing that you can mm -hmm. benefit from things as simple as positive thinking. Yeah. You know, quite a bit of what I share in there. Mm -hmm. It's just the power of, like, for example, a teacher who keeps the penance of the colleges that, that his kids from a very impoverished, at-risk area mm -hmm. had been going to college. So this is a story that Denzel Washington tells, the actor. Oh, yes. And so he had the experience that he would go to the boys club after school where he had this inspirational teacher who did exactly what I'm talking about. He would put the penance from the colleges that the boys mm -hmm. would go off to university mm -hmm. and that would be right there that Denzel could look up and um, realize, I knew that kid. He was here. Yeah. Now he's at college. Yeah. And what it does is it gives you that possibility. Yes. It gives you that possible you, yeah. the one that goes to college. It's kind of a wonderful reinforcement. It is. Mm -hmm. And so this, this whole idea of um, quantum jumps comes from taking a meditation state or lucid dreaming. And I also describe people who do this with near-death experiences, mm -hmm. which I don't recommend. So it's better, you know, you don't want to seek out a near-death experience. No, no, no. If it happens, it if happens. If it happens, it happens. happens. But what you, but what, what about, about astral projection? Would you advise that or no? Oh, maybe. Uh, but I, I recommend lucid dreaming and meditation first of all, because these are states uh, where you totally yeah. understand you are pure consciousness. Sometimes people, if you're doing astral travel really well you get the idea and you know you are that. We have to be careful too. And now I'm going to go back though. Most people know what um, meditation is and there are right. several ways to meditate. Right. I used to like to meditate to Steve Halpern's music because I love music and it yes. kind of took me somewhere. But um, not everybody knows what lucid dreaming is. That's the, exactly, and I get into it in the book a little bit. This is the way that you wake up inside a dream and recognize that you are dreaming. It yeah. takes practice to do that. It does. So meditation tends to be the easier gateway to but recognize that you are consciousness yeah. and you can make a jump. But lucid dreaming is very powerful because mm -hmm. when you start waking up inside your dreams, that really can be mind-blowing because everything can look very real, except you can now fly mm -hmm. uh, and do amazing things. As soon as you realize this is a dream, mm -hmm. so I can just sort of float up and go out mm -hmm. the door and mm -hmm. I can go talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. and it, you start recognizing that your ability to consciously explore the multiverse is pretty amazing. And you can do that in your dreams. You can do it, yeah. Do you think dreams are another level of um, reality? I mean, That's exactly it. I do. I, I think sometimes, especially when you're waking up in a dream, you're able to get answers, get information. And act, like I said, the most important part that I think is so important is recognizing that your identity is more to do with your consciousness than it is any particular physical manifestation, yeah. which enables you um, to be able to, power. Yeah, to, to reverse what doctors might call an incurable disease, which some people experience being able to do when they meditate, when they lucid dream, mm -hmm. or when they have their near-death experience. I always find that fascinating too about um, being able to cure diseases because we have so many nowadays and I, every time I read about people, I, I figure that we do have more power to control our health. Do you want to address that at all? Because is that something that you really that is, yes. charged up about? Because I am. I do get charged mm -hmm. up about that. And that's why I cover the placebo effect so much and explain as much more than the sugar pills. Mm -hmm. I, the reason I'm talking about placebo effect is to let people know that something amazing is happening. That the placebo effect has been something like doubling in the last 30 years. It's way beyond some just people the sugar might not pill. Know. Okay. Can okay. you explain it? I, I know yeah. what it is, but okay. not everybody might know what a so placebo let's is. Let's back up. So the okay. placebo <laughs> is just something, it, it means, um, please me, is the, the meaning of the word placebo. And it's, it means like it's a pacifier. It's something that you do that isn't meant to have a specific medicinal effect, per se, or anything, really. But yet, somehow, when you give people a sugar pill, which often the placebo is, or some other variation of an inert substance, then they will experience um, all kinds of positive effects just because they thought that this particular treatment might give them those benefits. And in addition to sugar pills and other inert substance pills, um, lots of placebo studies are happening right now, including placebo surgery, where arthroscopic knee surgery is simulated. So some people that are in the control group, um, you know, it's just a regular 
uh, laboratory. So, so what you're study. saying is the mind is so powerful. If it believes it, it can happen. Right. They believe they've had the surgery. They believe I must have been the recipient of the real thing. So now I can play basketball with my grandchildren. Now I can walk without pain, and they do, and they are. That's wonderful. A, new, a whole new branch of um, health and healing. Yes. yes. Now we talked about those really weird things, right? So a couple of things that I wanted to ask you about. Um, I know there's a scientific name for it, but disappearing and then reappearing someplace else. Like I think I read in your book there was teleportation. Teleportation. Yeah. Right. Right. So this would be another quantum. Uh, property, some, um, and I described some children that were doing yes, this a lot. I remember and, that. The kids that don't stay home. <laughs> now, you can imagine from a parent's point of view, like I just got them home again, and boom, That's they're scary gone. for the parents, but how do these kids do it? Were they advanced souls or spirits, or did they have something other kids didn't have? I mean, so you don't care every day about kids appearing and disappearing and then appearing again. Sometimes. Well, in some places in the world, these things can happen more, and it's so more open to it. Yeah, exactly. Culture. Exactly. And so if they believe, well, Padre Pio could fly, you know, they're there in Italy, and boom, and the kids are teleporting. Maybe the kids thought that, and they thought it was real, and they get in that meditative state. They can just jump from one reality to another. That's pretty much what they're doing. It's hard to believe that kids would even think about getting into a meditative state, though. I don't think they're thinking about it. Oh, okay. Oh, they're, they're doing something that they're you, you don't have to think about it. You can actually put yourself into a meditative state. Right. We do sometimes when we drive our car. We do. So it's, it's recognizing that you are that consciousness and becoming more familiar with identifying with that. And then escaping dangers. Well, I talked about mine, but right. maybe some people, like you said, with the car. But yes. then there's also escaping dangers There's where people have superhuman strength, like a car falls on a child and the mother is so intent on saving her child, right. she actually picks up the That's a great example. So that's, again, acting as if you have that power and with the will to jump to that reality where you have that ability, you can get that ability. I know. Previously, we've had explanations saying, like, well, you know, they've tried to explain away the quantum effect. But what I'm saying is, no, the quantum effects are always there. We need to factor that in, that we are able to recognize we all exist in a superposition of states. You can be the smart version of you, the right. strong version of you, the healthy there are version. Many, there are many personalities. The good the relationship yeah. version of you. Yeah, we just have to make up our mind or consciousness to do That's it. Right. So we're getting close to the end, so I'm, I have a couple of interesting things to think about. How will quantum jumping change the world in general, unless that's too hard to predict? Or <laughs> how do you see it changing the world, maybe? Well, my vision of it is that we're going to be moving into this quantum age more fully over the next several decades. And as we do so, we're going. To, it's going to change everything. This, this whole mindset that you do exist in that superposition of states. You live in an entangled universe where you are connected to other people. So it's not just you that matters, it's everybody. And you're able to recognize that anything that you do is affecting everybody. So the quantum jumping is not just something like, it's, I'm going to make my life better, I'm going to get rich, I'm going to marry Mr. Wright, I'm, you know, I'm going to cure my cancer. Mm -hmm. It can do those things mm -hmm. you know, on occasion. It, I, it's not something that's guaranteed, so mm -hmm. this is something that we're learning how to do. And as we open our minds to it, I predict that placebo effect is going to go through the roof. Uh, you know, it's already been yes. doubling in the last 30 years. And now you can tell people, you've got the placebo. Yeah. They still get better. So when you say it's been doubling, I mean, there have been a lot of spontaneous healings happening? Well, I, I hear about a lot of them. get a lot of them, yeah. And also just people feeling like their pain is gone. Um, so I do describe things people can do to help, mm -hmm. you know, help themselves. I, I got something, I think this was from your book, or I mean, I don't know if you said it or, or if you quoted somebody, but in your book, when enough people shift their belief structure to look at the world in fresh new ways, cultural paradigms, is that how you say paradigms. it? Paradigms. Paradigms. Mm -hmm. I said it wrong. Paradigms shift. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so th what we're moving into is this whole place where I can accept that I can be right and you can be right. We can both be right. And it can heal relationships. It can heal politics it, between countries. Can we be right because we have different perceptions of things? Or because this is a quantum way of thinking. It's, remember the true and false simultaneous? Yes. Or oh, the live and dead, which I really And alive and with. dead simultaneously. Yeah. It, it's just a way of finding peace by recognizing mm -hmm. we can coexist. All these realities are here. We don't need to go into reactive, fear-based, I must fight back mode. Right. And then maybe wars would disappear. Exactly. I still, I'm still having trouble with... Mandela being alive and dead at the same time. And we can be less judgmental when we uh, know that alternate histories exist. Yeah, no, that's you don't yeah. need to blame people yeah. for something you thought they did. Forgiveness becomes easier. Yeah. Empathy becomes easier. Mm -hmm. So this so, is a, a whole new way of thinking. So maybe in an alternate universe, we never had a civil war. It's possible. Mm -hmm. 
It's a bigger jump from a bigger you know, part of the tree. What happens yeah. is the farther off you go from the Civil War, then it's harder for us to believe you could jump to a reality where that never happened. Yeah. But we're getting better and better at this. Yeah. So who knows? Just keep asking how good can it get? How good can it get? Well, you're going to love my last question. It's a doozy. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Do we quantum jump when we leave our physical bodies or when we die? Oh. So you mean, are we taking that consciousness with us to another reality? Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. And that's based on, I, I include stories in the book that are documented stories from Ibn Alexander, who is a doctor, mm -hmm. and then also Anita Morjani. And both of their stories have oh, been very yes. documented. Tell us a little bit, uh, maybe we have another minute or two about Anita, because um, yeah. dying, dying to be me. Dying to be me. Right. She wrote that book to describe an experience she went through when she was so sick that she could barely move any part of her body. Doctors were giving her a very short time span left to live, and so she went into a near-death experience while I think she was in a wheelchair. I mean, she couldn't walk, and she'd gotten very, very sick. She'd been trying to do alternative healing methods. Nothing had been working. A number of things were wrong with her, and she was having um, like systemic organ failure, I believe. It was pretty bad. As on top of everything else. And so in that state of this pure consciousness that she entered upon what you might call that quantum jump of just going into that near-death experience, she immediately felt that she didn't need to fear anything and that by being fearful, she kind of locked in a reality that she didn't like. She could just go f become fearless and be in a reality where her body is just fine. It might not look fine at first, but when they do the tests, they'll see it's fine. I'm just kind of trimming the whole story way down. No, no, it's, yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> Lots of other things happened. She could see her brother was flying to see her, even though nobody had told her that. She could hear conversations happening in the hospital. Typical things that happen when people have that near-death experience, or a lucid dream, or meditation. You know, you become pure consciousness, and you know things. There's no way you could know what they are. Well, those two things that you said now, pure consciousness may be hard for us to attain, but you may have exercise and we can do it, but yes. we can actually work on being fearless. That seems to me that would be the easier thing to do of the two. Okay. Becoming fearless. That's her advice. When she came yeah. out of that experience was for everybody, become fearless. You don't need to be afraid of anything. It's part of being trusting, I think. It I is. mean, trusting that there's more than what we see. I think if everybody felt that we're, I remember watching an Oprah show and this lady said, I think she was on a plane that was hijacked and they were coming and she was on the ground. And all of a sudden some peacefulness came over and she knew that she was going to be all right. And Oprah said, that's true. Because if we believe we're spirit, nothing can hurt us, right. really. Nothing right. can hurt us. So if we can really believe who we truly are, which we selves are, we would be fearless and then right. make our lives a lot easier. Exactly. And Cynthia, it's great seeing you again. And you. I just want to tell people that are watching our talk that you just wrote Quantum Jumps, very fascinating book. And Cynthia Sue Larson has been my guest, medical, not medical, I keep saying medical, I interviewed a medical intuitive, right. life coach intuitive, yes. and author. Yes. And you have um, on the on a website, you have a reality shift, shifts, shifters. Right, I've got yeah, other books as well. The website is reality shifters. Shifters, right, which I get. And I, yes. It's fascinating. <laughs> and your other books are? Well, I've got reality shifts, high energy money, aura advantage, Karen Kimball and the Dreamweaver's Web. So the ones in paperback, and then I've got an ebook shining with the aura of success. I think I have two of those other ones, but the money one, that one I really like. Yeah. <laughs> that one I gotta get. <laughs> well, thanks so much. It was great having you, and I'd love to talk to you again. Thanks for watching us.